<laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 63. And it is June 12th. Really? Does that sound right? <laughs> I'm on vacation. Let's it could be any that. day in the world. I think it's June 12th. Um, it's Sunday. And this is my first dose of caffeine. So, a little slow today. Why don't you talk about your awesome... Well, I'm Laura. Also oh. known as Lala. <laughs> See? I'm slow. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. Kate, I have the chastity pillow right here for you. <laughs> Irish Diva was commenting about our chastity pillow. It's right there. I'm old and I need back support, so I have a pillow underneath my back. Uh-huh. Um, you should show your pretty shawl. Or okay. should I let you get to the end of the row? No, you can, we can totally begin. I'm not going to start with the shawl, though. I'm going to start with the socks I started knitting this week. Cool. Just to mess you up. So... I had talked about last week how I was going to start some hand spun socks. Look how screaming bright they are. There's the first one. I'm doing them toe up with Wendy Johnson's generic um, gusset heel. And you can find the pattern for that. She actually has a sock template, which is very cool. And it is available for free on her blog, which is WendyKnits.net. And then here's the second one. Let me show you the yarn that this is coming from. This is That's a Blue Moon really Fiber good Arts. Because you can see every uh -huh, different the fly. three different flies. It's Blue Moon Fiber Arts in the Sherbert colorway. They do a sheep to shoe kit, which I think I might right be here, the best. Actually. Okay. <laughs> Leslie and I bought them together so when we were in Atlanta. It's eight ounces of fiber, and Laura's already spun hers. I did not. And so this is not the whole eight ounces. I have another skein of this at home. This is around four ounces. But I spun it into a three-ply, a very loosely applied three-ply. So, so we're going to see how it holds up. I actually, I think down here is my, well, no. I really like the top, like the ribbing part of this one. How yellow and the orange. Yeah, the yellow and the orange and the pink together. But there's that. We'll give it into the second one. I was in training this week and my trainer um, I was doing clicker training which it, clickers are this little device that the kids all get and then they can record their answers um, like and it all you need is a projector and the clickers and it and a computer and it she says, had a very cute teacher okay and um, <laughs> anyway he let me knit <laughs> so he was cute for no other reason than he let me knit um, great fabulous all right that's <laughs> I'm going to be bright pink for the rest of the show. <laughs> I can interrupt you and show some of mine and then come back to you. Okay. That? Okay. <laughs> now I'm all dis discombobulated. I've lost my groove. So I finished the, I showed you guys the finished Cine socks last week. And so the only other thing I had on the needles was the lead light cardigan. But I don't always feel like doing fair out. Sometimes my brain just needs a little something easier than that to deal with. So I decided I'd had this yarn that Stacy sent me a few weeks ago, her new Prissy Girl base, and I had the fingering weight version of the Prissy Girl base, which is 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. So it's the epitome of luxury yarn. It is so nice. And I had it in the skein, and I was like, it keeps calling to me. It wants to be knit. It wants to be knit. But I couldn't decide what to knit with it. And I had a few shawls in my queue that would be really nice in it, but I didn't quite have enough yardage, uh, or I didn't feel confident that I wouldn't run out. So what I ended up doing is this is the ball. Well, this is the cake. So it's a real deep purple, and it's got a little bit of a halo, but not much. And I decided what I was going to do is I wanted to knit a drapey cowl, one of the ones that you can kind of wrap around a few times. But I didn't find anything on Ravelry that really worked for what I wanted. So I just started something. It's basically a knit one, purl one rib with slipped selvage edges. And I'm just going to keep knitting until I'm almost out of yarn. And then it'll be, I'll probably put it up as a free pattern. It's not a complicated thing. It's knit one, purl one. I did a provisional cast on so that I can join it with the end so that there won't be any actual seam. And it's just going to be one that it'll wrap around your neck snugly once and then loosely one, you know, another time. So, I don't know snugly what I'm Snugly twice, like, you'll wrap around multiple times to get it snugger. And then well, I mean, like, it'll wrap around once, it'll be tight, and then it'll be loose. You can okay. wrap around a few times if you want it. Okay. It's, what do they call those, eternity scarves? 
I've, Infinity Scarves, Infinity maybe? Infinity Kells, I don't know. I've seen them, I just don't know what they're called, but it's so nice to work with because it feels great. I wish that you could feel it, but it feels really nice, very luxurious, and even though it's got a halo, it's not itchy at all. So I'm really enjoying it, and um, I need to go to um, the Libby Lu has, Lu has got some. I need to go and get it before it's gone, and get a couple of skeins because there's a shawl I want to make, but it requires. She's got that Miss Scarlet's curtains, that green up mm -hmm. in that. Oof. I may have been on Luby eyeing it earlier this week. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go and get it um, at some point before it's all gone, but it's really nice to work with. So I, it's this won't be the only time I use it. And the other thing you guys have seen, but it has made some progress. Um, I've tried to knit on this an hour a day. It's just, it's kind of a pain to get out and get situated and all that. Once you start knitting, it's fine, but getting everything situated with four different freaking schemes of yarn. Freegan, new word. Uh, okay. Let me try to it's like this. vegan and free. I think actually freegan is a word. It's the people who only consume things that are free. So, Never heard of that either. Really? It's uh, like I'm learning all kinds of things today. Uh, yeah, it's an actual thing. They do a lot of dumpster diving. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's those people. Maybe. I think there was a Bones episode when they were talking about friggins and they found a body. There is. Okay. <laughs> Randomness of the day. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. Last week when I showed it to you guys, I only had um, up to here knit. So I've knit almost two full repeats since then. So it's, it's making progress. I'm nearly done with the waist decreases. I've still got probably three hours more to go on that. Um, I'm still enjoying it. It's just because I have four balls of yarn, it's kind of a pain to rearrange I like them. how it's turning out, though, now that but, you've gotten a little bit further in. Yeah. You can see it a little bit more. And um, it does still look very small, but it, it stretches quite a bit. So I'm not worried about it being too small at this point. Who knows what will happen when it's uh, done. But I'm enjoying knitting it. I just... Did you wash this wash? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. okay. And it did grow? It did grow. Plus, I went up in needle size when I actually went to knit it. Okay. Just to allow a little bit of extra room. Just okay. on the safe side. Are we back to me? We are back to you. <laughs> and I'll try to refrain from embarrassing you any further. <laughs> Although, I make no promises. Awesome. Um, other things in the needles. It's the I candles. probably would have forgotten this. My cats and sweaters. They're so cute. Um, it's Gnore. Out of the kitchen sink dye works and it's gotten a little bit of love recently so it's at one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve points that's quite a bit of love that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve anyway um so it's a little bit bigger i love how the dexter colorway of the kitchen sink dye works is working up i'm glad you decided it's to keep going smooshy. i know i thought nice. about ripping it out it's and got I really, random blues in it yeah, and I like how when you actually stretch out the points, how they look with the lace actually kind of blocked. I think it's very pretty. I think Pignit Knits did a great job designing this, and she actually has a new pattern that just came out like two days ago that's very cute. Anyway, size 5, 3.75 signature needles, and so I'm going to go to 15 points and then start decreasing. So maybe that'll get some love after I get what is the big blob in front of me done. So what I'm working on in my lap is the My Wish shawl. And I'm actually finished with the Colorwork main body and have started the second of the lace charts. So there's that. This is a design that I'm doing for Make-A-Wish for Lynn Zim's Cupcake Mafia fundraiser for the Denver Oyster. It will be available through a donation to her um, team and we'll have more information about that next week. Yep, we'll have more details on that then. It'll be exciting and I'm so excited to start that. That's one of my favorite things that we do throughout the year. It's one of, it's, you know, everybody, every podcaster at least that, well most of them have their own little charity thing that they, they kind of tie themselves to which is perfectly fine. This is kind of our signature one. We only like, we did it for the first time last year, but I mean it's making we a enjoy wish. it. Yeah, it's for the kids. That it's something a really big deal for them. And Lynn firmly believes in giving back. So I'm getting all teary thinking about Aww. it. But it's very it's a very important thing to do. And last year with um, with our help 
and with a lot of other people's help, she raised over $2,500 with her initial goal was like $1,000. So, so it's very cool and there's always awesome prizes mm -hmm. if you're in it for the prizes and not the charity aspect. There's always some wonderful prizes that get uh, donated. Lynn always donates a, at least a skein of her hand spun and she just won first place yes. at Estes in the alpaca category and second place in the, what was it, Paco Vacuna? Paco Vacuna, I think category. is how you pronounce it. So those little itty bitty ones that hang out in the mountains. And she actually was, she plurked about how she's taken classes both from Maggie Casey and Cheryl Oberle, I don't know how you say her name, O-B-E-R-L-E. -E. And they're both like spinning gurus and apparently they were, were chatting at Estes and comparing notes on what an excellent student Lynn was, which is... That's so cool. That's very awesome. So My little geek heart geeks for of. Lynn. <laughs> I'm so jealous because she's an amazing spinner. Yep. But um, speaking of spinning, I got nothing. Oh, but we're not, we haven't gotten our foes yet. I got nothing for that either. <laughs> so for the next 10 minutes, it's all about lore. As it should be. As it should be. Um, FOs for the week. Last Sunday, I was working on the heel of my second cannon hand die in the We Are For The Night Arthur base self-striping yarn. It's a BFL base and I finished this the heel of the second and they are in no way matchy matchy at all. They're all kinds of crazy with crazy different size stripes on the back and everything else. But I took pictures already and put them on my Ravelry page, so that made me happy. Did you already add them in your stash dash? I did. So my stash dash, the only thing left that I finished that I have to photograph is the second bucket hat, and that'll put me at around... We'll talk about numbers later. Okay. It's <laughs> depressing enough. So that's my only finished object on the wheel. Um, my air is out at my house and has been since for around two weeks now. And last week it wasn't too bad, um, the week prior. It wasn't too bad. It was like 80, 85 outside. So it stayed like lower 80s with those ceiling fans going. It wasn't a big deal. Got lots of spinning and knitting done. This week it was 99 degrees outside. For the whole week. <laughs> For the whole week. Um, we've had no rain. It's been super sunny and pretty, which is nice, and super humid and 99 degrees out. Yeah, here in Mississippi, the humidity is, is in the summer is... You can cut it with a knife, yeah, it's essentially. Terrible. So there was not a whole lot of spinning done. In fact, there was no spinning until this morning, and I woke up and I was like, it's only 82 in the house. I can totally spin today. So last week, I had shown you the first bobbin of the grape soda by Sarah Kate Fibers <laughs> and there's what I can spin in an hour essentially <laughs> so there's an hour's worth of spinning on the second bobbin I still have a good bit of this left so that much it was originally five ounces and obviously I have less than 2.5 left although it doesn't feel like it, it feels like there's still it's four ounces pretty full to me. left so um, but it's wonderful to spin. It's a wool Firestar Surrey Alpaca blend. They have an Etsy shop that I linked last week and I'll link again this week. I'm enjoying it. I am, my goal for the summer was to spin four ounces a week and that put me a little bit behind what I wanted to spin, but I'm going to try to catch up this week. You can spin like four ounces in a day if you sit down and do it, but of course it's been crazy hot. It's been crazy hot and mm -hmm, I don't know, like the first week the spinning bug was like totally had hit me and I spun, I had plied the first four ounces of, you know, I plied four ounces last week and had the finish to show you and I had the course bone which I know was your mm -hmm. favorite oh, I mean different and um, the three ply and then had started this and this week I just it stagnated but I'm gonna get my mojo back because we have tour de fleece coming up and I must have my spinning mojo back I didn't actually lose my mojo it's just too hot to spin yeah. you get the sticky hands your mojo and, melted yeah <laughs> and I or like I, a I, stick of butter <laughs> we were g-chatting this morning and she said I don't have any spinning yet and I'm like I don't either and it ain't gonna happen because and actually this it's like three o'clock on Sunday and this is the first time I picked up knitting needles today I've just been you've been cleaning cleaning and organizing and um, there's new shelves in the knitting room the red yes. shelves have reappeared my knitting room is almost totally finished 
and I may or may not attach a little tour of the room at the end of the video. We'll see how quickly I can clean it before <laughs> we uh, upload it. Still a couple things, yeah. But um, I, I didn't get any spinning done, but I've chosen what I'm going to spin next, and it's something that I've wanted to spin since I got it, which really wasn't that long ago. Um, the first part of April, someone turned me on to Nitty and Color. She has an Etsy shop. Actually, it might be her website. Yeah, her website, knittyandcolor.com. You read that upside down. I'm very impressed. And um, this is called Frap Just Day, which is a reference to um, <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. Wonderland and the Mad Hatter. And it's Falkland. It's four ounces of Falkland. And it is not really what I would choose as a typical color, but the way that the colors work together makes me I happy. I like it together. So it it's is. It's a lot of orange, which it is, is not a typical Leslie color. That's true. I haven't decided how I'm going to spin it yet. So you guys should possibly give me some suggestions. I think you should fractal spin it. Two ply, three ply, fractal, Navajo. I don't think I'll Navajo this one. So suggest what you think I should do with it. It's very, very bright orange with um, purpley blues and there's some pink and a little bit of green in there. But I don't think it's as orange as it's showing up on the camera though. Yeah, I don't think it is either, but it's knitting and color. Cool beans. She has some really pretty stuff on her side. She does, and we got to meet her when we went to Stitches. That's true, we did. We got a picture with her, I think. Yep. We need to find that picture. I think Amy took it. I think Amy took it too. <laughs> got Trixie Amy. Fun fairy girl. Yes. By the way, every time she swings those needles this way, I feel like she's going to take out my eyes. It's possible because I don't know when to beside somebody, so I'll, when I get to the end of a row, I'll just pull and, uh -huh. and I'm... I, I we just, were Skyping the other night and I, I really her. thought that I was going to lose it. And these eye. are the super pointy stiletto mm -hmm. signatures, so... When my eye pops out and is on the end of your needle. <laughs> but then if you have to get a fake eye, you could, like, store stuff in there. <laughs> I would totally do, what, like, with the Twits. Uh, have you ever read The Twits by Roald Dahl? So The Twits is a book by Roald Dahl who wrote, like, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and James and Jam Peach and all those awesome, Matilda, all those awesome books. He's got one called The Twits, and she's got a glass eye, and she'll, like, put it in the bottom of the guy's beer. <laughs> and so when he gets to the bottom of the beer, she'll be like, I'm watching you! <laughs> totally would have a field day with that. That would be awesome. And you could get one that like further doesn't match your other eye. You could get like a bright orange one or something. <laughs> Woo, we got a little off topic there. Mm. Um, we Hopefully have... I will never need a glass <laughs> off. <laughs> Hopefully this conversation will never be applicable. But if you do, we've already got it figured out. <laughs> I do. Um, we, we have a book review. Uh -huh. it, it, we do. We got an advanced copy of Sock Knitting Masterclass from Interweave. I'm so excited about this book. Yes. So you can see the number of tabs. <laughs> it is crazy. On both sides, not just one. So this is coming out in 2011. <laughs> 2001. In August. <laughs> in August. It is by Ann Budd, but she has interviewed... Several designers. She collaborated with a bunch of people for designs. I think it was 12 different designers. Mm -hmm. And it also has a very cool DVD, which is actually in Leslie's computer because we were watching it. Mm -hmm. But it, So it has the DVD support as well. Which the DVD covers a lot of the cast-ons and um, toes. And there is a lot of methods. information in this. Yeah. When they say master class, they mean master class. So it starts off by mastering good sock design. And it goes through a whole bunch of different things. How to fit a sock, different sizes. How to, how to measure your foot. Yeah, how to measure your foot, how to make it comfortable, how much yarn you typically need if you're knitting like a stock knit sock for different people. So it's um, a little chart and it's like, if your foot measures nine and a half inches around and you're getting six, inches, six stitches to the inch, you would need 317 yards or 290 meters approximately. Yeah, it's a good place to get a base. Yeah, if you're knitting for someone who you typically don't, like if I was going to knit socks for my ginormous father's man feet and they were 11 inches around, it tells me how much I might need because I don't typically knit socks that are 11 inches around. It goes through different heels, yeah, there, different heel types. There's a very thorough informational piece for each part of the sock, the cuff, the leg, the heel, the gusset, the... I and mean, they spend seven pages just on heels. The toe, yeah. It's very so, comprehensive. And the same for toes. One, two, three, four, five. Five different pages on toes. How to cable without a cable needle. 
designing with stranded color work, designing with lace, designing with slip stitches, designing with traveling stitches, shadow knitting, entrelock. This has it all. This book is, it is a little bit of everything. Um, so if you wanted a book that would kind of teach you how to use lace in a sock and how to use cables in a sock and how to use um, twisted stitches in a sock, all that is going to be covered in one book, this book. And how to, different styles and different types of socks. Not only like Cat Bordy has a pattern in here with her style of making socks. Which is a totally different construction than anything you've probably ever So done. different constructions, that's a good word. Um, the Moccasin Construction by Elizabeth Zimmerman. Meg Swanson's got one in here using that. Priscilla Gibson Roberts has her own special construction. That's in here. Toe up, top down. If I was deciding that I wanted a book to teach me all sorts of different constructions, all sorts of different mm -hmm. um, concepts when it comes to lace, entrelac, all that stuff, this would be the book that I would get. They talk about toe-up bind-offs. For those of you who have issues with Kitchener, there are two whole pages devoted to Kitchener Stitch. As well as video support with the DVD. And other bind-offs. Zigzag, gather tip, tons of different toe bind-offs. One of my favorite patterns, and then there's the patterns, which are amazing. Right. Cookie A did an asymmetrical cables pattern. And what we really like about that is it's not just the cables themselves, but there's texture and they're traveling cables. There's texture within the cables, which are really, really pretty. I also like how this book has several sizes for each sock, so 7-inch, 8-inch, 9-inch around on this one in particular. They use all sorts of different yarns. Pagewood Farms is the one that's used in here, but there's a lot of indie crafters like Pagewood Farms, and then larger dyers like Cascade is used in the Anne Hansen one, mm -hmm. stuff like that different needle sizes. There's two sport weight socks, I believe, and the rest are fingering. But there's also a great introduction by each and every person to tell you why they designed the sock the way they did. Right. So it's very cool. Also the design techniques, we wanted to oh, mention yes. that. So for each sock, it tells you up in the corner which of the design right techniques there. that you're going to use. Are you going to use um, a regular top-down toe, or are you going to use a a heel flapped heel or a gusset heel or so for this one top down construction and it tells you about the page that that refers to designing with cables working with four double pointed needles any elastic cast on round heel wedge toe kitchener stitch yeah. so every every piece of the construction that you need to know it references that for every pattern and it also does yarn notes. So in this one it talks about how some socks clearly require a specific type of yarn, but these would work well with several different yarn personalities. You can knit them with a smooth, slick, well-rounded yarn, a softer, earthier yarn, any of those. Because yarn choice is a big part of knitting socks as well. If you're looking for some color work socks, there's, those are the French Market Socks by Nancy Bush. Some big name designers that if you've ever read Interweave magazine, you've seen them in the past. An Anne Hansen pattern, Almondine. Not every um, major sock writer that you've ever heard of is going to be in this book, but no. it does cover a lot of ground. It does. I think, I feel like there's some very specific ones that are missing, but it isn't an, it, 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 I can't talk today. It is an interweave book. Right. So there's So when you think of interweave knits and the names that you see associated with interweave knits, it's the usual suspects. Right. With a couple thrown in there. Like Anne Hansen's not a typical interweave person, but she's in here. And I love the yarn that she chose with this pattern. It's a variegated um, cascade heritage yarn, but I think it looks really nice with that pattern. It actually works pretty well. I'm skipping those mm -hmm. ones. Okay, I just have to comment that if I ever... No. Uh, no, I'm just... Going no. To. <laughs> they're very pretty. But... They're super pretty in the, the cover um, pattern, but there's no way that I'm going to knit thigh-high socks, color work, if I had striping thighs the size of that, perhaps, but I do not. So. One, two, three, four, five... Six, seven different colors striped throughout <laughs> <laughs> with color work thrown in there on top. Yeah. On size two needles. At least it's size two instead of like a zero or something. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> 
that only gives you one finish size of seven inches around. Basically, they're saying if you're not seven inches around, you probably shouldn't be wearing those socks. <laughs> it gets bigger as they increase. It goes seven foot circumference, then a seven inch ankle circumference, then a nine and three fourths calf circumference, then an eleven and a half. Uh, a nine and three upper, quarter calf circumference? Upper leg <laughs> circumference. So and it's for fun, go measure your calf and tell <laughs> me if it's a nine and three quarter. I love the name. Nine and three quarters is Harry Potter yeah. reference. Yeah. Twenty three and a half total leg length from rib cuff to base of heel. I think Plus the hip if I lived dog. somewhere where it was cold nine or ten months out of the year, maybe, but I live in Mississippi and it is very not very often cold enough to need thigh high wool socks. Oh, they recommend doing an elastic garter to tie over the upper leg and fold the cup over it so you can do like a little yeah. seam. It also says that you could wear a pair of textured tights underneath them. For a little extra warmth. <laughs> ah, things that we don't need in Mississippi. I really like these Rose Rips by Evelyn Clark. She's a great designer. I like most of her stuff. I love the simplicity of yeah, those. Yeah, this is a classic. It tends to be a classic design. Out of uh, Lorna's Laces. Twisted Stitch Suckings by Meg Swanson. These are my favorite ones in the book be because I like the pattern, but I also like the construction. It's got a moccasin sole. So it's actually the way that you knit it, assuming that you ever have a problem with your heel wearing out or getting you felted, the foot there. what have you, you snip one thread and you can unravel the whole sole of the sock without affecting the pattern section, the top of the foot and the calf, and you can just replace the sole as necessary. So that's because I've never tried that technique. I've, I've heard of it in passing, but that's when I'll be knitting just to learn the technique. And there were some patterns in here that reminded us of other people, so we thought we'd give them the shout out. These Knot Socks by Nancy Bush really remind me of Paula of the Knitting Pipeline. Yeah. It could just be because there is a book of bird watching beside them, but I don't know why. It just reminds me a whole bunch of Paula, and I think they're gorgeous. And I really like the back detail on this. Mm -hmm. We found the back detail. On the leg, I think that's really pretty because it's just pretty simple. It's a one by one. So most of the texture is on the front. There's very pretty mock cables and lace. I like the slip and slide socks by Chrissy Gardner. I can see them with a very variegated yarn. Yeah, I think that would actually work really well with a variegated, with all the slip stitches. And there's some nice detail on the back of the leg of those as well. Yep. There's the back. This is a very long book review, but we've got a lot to say about it. And again, there's yarn notes on most every pattern to let you know what you need to be looking for. Those were all top-down socks. Now we've gotten into the toe-up sock category. I'm not as fond of their toe-up sock category. There's a lot of entrelac and um, intarsia that's just not me. But Uni Jing did some stealth argyles, and they reminded me of our friend Steve from Dramatic Knits. They're out of Malabrigu sock, and I thought that was a very interesting concept. So it's a shadow knitting pattern. Yeah, it's a shadow knitting sock pattern, which you don't typically see. And you don't and typically argyles. see from Uni Jing. And they're eight inches around foot circumference, but I'm sure you can make them bigger if right. you needed to. So very cool. I think that's about it. I'm not. Oh, the um, cat boardy pussy willow stockings. And the construction is similar to the Coriolis, um, which is in her new Pathways for Sock Knitters, which is something I've always wanted to do, but it involves so much math that it's put me off. But this seems to be easier. But she does do a very cool toe on that called the moccasin toe, mm -hmm. which kind of reminds me of if you've ever done a shawl with a garter tab cast on, it kind of reminds me of that. And that's about it. There's some great techniques in the back. Some more techniques in the back, I should say. And all the techniques are covered in the DVD as well. Yep, and this book retails for $26.95. Of course, you're getting a DVD with there that has Ann Bud speaking about the different types of socks and giving you lots of techniques as well. So the video, we did watch um, most of the video and uh, a lot of it is Anne discussing, reading parts of the book and kind of talking about the socks and their design that she does do a lot of the techniques and the camera work is nice and clear. My only 
caveat with the camera work is that it's not over the shoulder so you have to kind of reverse what she's doing to so that you can do it but that's a small complaint and it's only you know that's a little minor thing the camera work is very clear though very clear on the close-ups mm -hmm. so we've both enjoyed the yep. master sock knitting master we class. might fight over who gets to keep it <laughs> but um yeah so there's your book review yay let's see favorite things I kind of feel like I don't have much to contribute this week because I haven't, you know, it's been a crazy week at work and I, next week, this coming week should be a little easier and then the following week will be hell again, but um, that's why I don't have a ton of stuff to contribute, but hopefully I have it'll be better next week. two new TV shows that I started watching. You do. I started watching Castle, which is not available on Netflix Instant, which makes me very sad, so I'm having to wait for the discs to go back and forth, but I watched the first four episodes of the first season and I'm enjoying it. Anything with Nathan Fillion, you know, I'm a sucker. I can't believe it's in the third season before I even caught on to ex yeah. its existence. I like Nathan Fillion. It was hard for me to get into Castle, but I didn't, uh, to be fair, I didn't start with the first season. I started when Hulu was had the third season, I think was when I started. Gotcha. So maybe I missed something. The music at the beginning is kind of abrasive because they typically start with like some punk rock, like pink or something is how it starts. So it's like, Blair, yeah. and then it goes into it, but I just kind of ignore it. You know, it's 30 seconds. We're over and done with it. Um, he's got a lot of nice one-liners. I always enjoy the one-liners. The other thing that I've been totally addicted to is My Sister's Fall. So I've been watching. <laughs> my sister lives in the city of Philadelphia. Oh <laughs> she was watching this on her iPhone while she was at my house Friday night, and I sat, and you know how sometimes you'll play the game with your husband or your brother or whatever, you know, and you're, you're just staring <laughs> at them, and you wait to see how long it'll take until they see that you're staring at them? Five minutes, and Laura still didn't notice. So. I was obsessed. So his, my sister actually kind of lives close to this. There's this big parking issue in Philadelphia, like there is in any ma major city. I'm right. trying to remember what the name of the show is now. Parking, parking Wars. wars. <laughs> and I've only watched the Philadelphia ones, and last night I watched like the first seven episodes. I watched one here Friday night and then last night. I believe it. <laughs> live a very interesting life. <laughs> so I was working on the shawl and trying to get through the striping section. And so I decided to put that on. It is hilarious how people act in front of cameras. Like they know a camera crew's there and they're standing there cussing these poor. And I feel bad for the people who the have attendance. to like boot your car yeah. because they actually have a second driver that stands over it, like a rider who stands over them to make sure that no one comes up from behind and attacks them. Yeah. That's crazy. But it's also like if you enjoy reality TV that is very screwed up, like toddlers and tiaras. I was going to say, speaking of. <laughs> which is coming back soon. Yeah, it starts next week, the new um, season. Those are like, toddlers and tiaras is really the only reality TV I watch because I'm just fascinated by that. I, social dynamic yeah. that occurs there parking wars very similar it's just fascinating to me what people how people act and how people behave it's just very interesting so that's what i've been watching i actually have <laughs> been watching um, week. somebody recommended no it was netflix that recommended it based on me liking um firefly and what's the other one the british children of war was the third season can't believe I can't remember is what it that Torchwood? is. Torchwood, yes, thank you. Um, so based on liking those, they recommended I watch this series called Lex, L-E-X-X. -X. I've watched the first two episodes. Each episode is an hour and a half long. And it was something that was on Showtime in the late 90s. It's really weird, but I'm okay with that for right now. So that's I watched a couple episodes of that yesterday and one Friday, I think, and one yesterday. Um, oh. So we already said congratulations to Lynn. She won her category first place in alpaca. alpaca for hand spinning at the Estes Market Wool Festival and second place in Paco Vicuña. And Estes is huge. It's like a big that's, market. that's And last huge. year she took third place in something, but I can't remember what it was. I think it was Pat Alpaca. Was it? Okay. Alpaca. Yeah. But so she's improving. She's <laughs> an amazing spinner. Amazing. We have Stash Dash going on in the the board. I just so, posted and got my number. My number, number is 298. <laughs> and Laura is like two, right? Because you, you posted one uh, about the explanation. Then So she's number two. And I'm number 298. That doesn't matter. How many yards do you have? 
how many yards do you have? 2,200. I have 674, so I'm a little bit behind. You're getting there. Though. I have no doubt Laura will hit it. I really don't think that I'm going to, but whatever. You might. Who cares? Who knows? Um, I would love to hit it for both knitting and then hit it for spinning, but we'll see. Really? That would be crazy incredible. We'll see. I'd have to start a second. Do you have an overachiever best friend, too? <laughs> but you always knit, like, the hardcore complicated stuff. Uh, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> maybe I should get a knitting machine and just you whip can. through the socks. You get more yardage that way. Um, okay, so also, Tour de Fleece is coming. It starts the... 2nd of July and it runs through the 24th of July so we have a team um, we may or may not do prizes I don't know we haven't figured that out yet we've just been too busy to kind of do details on yeah we have a lot going on there is a um, speaking like in the knit girls group so there is the stash dash going on there is tour de fleece that's going to start soon and then if you're bored and you need something else to do I am doing a book club, and we will switch books around every two weeks, so it's not, like, super complicated. Right now, it's Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. You can either listen to it, or you can read it, and that's going on right now. The, there's still some people doing the spin-along who are finishing up their yep. spinning I and should ordinary. finish mine. Uh, so we've got that going on as well. We are still taking submissions at Get Involved at TheKnitGirls.com. Video submissions for any talk about anything that inspires you for 30 to 60 seconds. Or for however long as you want, so long as it'll go through the email <laughs> the email filter. So different email accounts have different restrictions on size. So figure, figure out what you can do and email it to Get Involved at TheKnitGirls.com. Uh, let's see. You had some awesome test knitters that you wanted to talk I about. I do. I forgot last week. Totally was blown away by my test knitters for Stuck Like Glue. I had three, and I wanted to thank them publicly. One was Emo, Eat My Oxygen. The second was Lazy Sock Monkey. And then the third was Patchwork Bumblebee. So thank you all so much for test knitting for me. I always have incredible test knitters. I have three incredible test knitters for this shell coming up. They are my sister Lemon Half. Show me your knits, Jessica, and then I also have Karen from Round the Twists. So if you want to see more of the shawl, she's doing a gorgeous she one is. out of hand splint and volmiza. Mm -hmm. It's great and very it's well. Gorgeous. So I can't wait to see what all they come up with. And then they catch all my little boo boos and sometimes there's a few and sometimes there's an immense amount. Yeah. Test knitters are a really important part of your uh, designing really process. No matter who you are, you should definitely get your design test knit. Um, okay, so another new little thing, and this is mainly for indie crafters and um, rather than the general audience, but on our site, theknitgirls.com, we have opened up a single ad space. We are not going to turn our site into, you know, a bunch of blinking ads and <laughs> pop-ups, but we have a single ad space. So if you're interested in getting your product on our site, just email me, Leslie at theknitgirls.com or Laura at theknitgirls.com. And I just forwarded it to Leslie. So. <laughs> and we'll, um, we, can, we can talk about details. So there's that. You are a whore for a sale. I am. I had two sales this week. <laughs> So, let's, so let's the take a first look at your sale. Goodies. Well, I only got I only have one goodie oh, with okay. me. The other is not here yet. So the first thing is Erin Lane Bags is having a fifteen percent off sale, and they're also doing free shipping. So I got another little pouch. Ten bucks for yeah, I think it was yeah, right around ten dollars altogether. Awesome. Um, a little bit over that, maybe eleven. I don't know, somewhere around there. But very inexpensive it's for a nice bag. Yes. So that's where the hand spun socks are. And then I also got new balls for my Trindle. <laughs> Which sounds so dirty, but uh, Trindle Man has opened his he side calls back up something again. something else, doesn't he? I can't remember what they're called. And they're arms. Arms. And yeah. so I have the micro Trindle, which y'all have seen, um, which I was spinning with a couple, like a month ago on the podcast. I spin with it when I'm traveling more or when I'm at school. It's real lightweight. And it's very lightweight. And so I had lightweight balls or arms on it, but he had cobweb weight Ooh. arms that went up. So I purchased, he's having a 15% off sale. If you're in, if you're participating in Tour de Fleece, you just have to use a code. And then he also asks that you put your team name in his message box. And supposedly you get a wristband that's like spin on or something like That's that. That's cool. 
and um, 15% off. So I'll be interested to see. Mom yesterday was talking about ordering a Trindle. So I want a spin off bracelet. More. Okay. If mom gets one, then I'll seal okay. it for you. <laughs> you can just have mine. You can also purchase the bracelets, I think, for three dollars. Oh, okay, I might do that. I don't I don't spend on spindles often enough to justify purchasing one. You can purchase something for me. When I already <laughs> have one. So it's yeah, subtle, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Um Okay, so awesome sales. Go get yourself some if you want some. And one of our favorite indie dyers is doing a club. So you guys know that we are no stranger to Stacy of Tempted Yarns. Um, we count her as a personal friend, and we did long before the podcast ever started. Uh, we met her at the first Spring Fling, and we have been friends ever since. Oh, yes. I say we like we're one person. But <laughs> <laughs> um, So anyway, Stacy finished up her first or second sock club, I want to say early this year or late last year. I can't remember exactly when it was. And she took a little break, and now she's decided she's going to start a new one, which is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> and it's going to be a six-month club, and it's going to start in August, or is it July? I think August. it's August, and go to August. June or July of next year. It's one year, it's six shipments, and I want to say it's between 200 and 220. It's 200 without shipping, shipping. Okay. costs, and then when you add in the shipping costs, I think it's $220. It's available, you can, well, you get a discount, maybe it's 230 you get a discount if you pay for it all, all up right. front, but if you want to do a payment plan, she arranges that through PayPal right. as well. And she charges you the month before she sends the yes. package out. Um, it will have different kinds of yarn, and if she introduces a new base in the next year, you might be one of the first people to get that new base. Um, there are some awesome designers that are, have agreed to be part of it, but that's all secret, so we're not going to say who those people are yet. Um, the people who are in the last sock club get first pick, but the spots go up for the general public at some point tomorrow, Monday the 13th of June. If you want more details on how to join in, it will probably be a lottery system. You go to Tempted's Yarn Group, Tempted Yarns, on the Ravelry boards, mm -hmm. and there will be details there. Look for those beginning on the 13th of June. Um, both of us are joining in because yep. we both love tempted stuff. I also am buying Becky a membership. That's yeah. so sweet. It is, isn't it? Because I know um, she likes Stacy's yarn a whole bunch. Yeah. It's so, it's so squishy. It makes me so happy. I know. This is stiff. We're, Stacey's we're both knitting with Stacy's yarn That's true. Right now. <laughs> but um, <sighs> anyway, we were vets, so we were able to go ahead and get in and sign up, but everybody else will be able to sign up on Monday the 13th, so head over to Tempted's Ravelry Group if you would like to sign up to get in the lottery. Great. I think that's it. It's burlesque themed. It is burlesque themed, which fits Stacy's personality really well. I know she'll do an awesome job with it because it's something that it, it, she can kind of visualize that kind of stuff. And she was sending me she some She was doing some stuff. research the other day yeah. and was sending me stuff. I got pictures of some things and I was like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, now I'm getting all pink and stuff. <laughs> so that's it for this week. We'll, we'll see you again next week. We the 19th, I think. Yep. And um, until then, you guys have a good week, and we'll see you then. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Okay. Hey. Hi. <laughs> I didn't realize we were doing this yet. <laughs> we are. We're doing it live. So <laughs> I keep forgetting to give you guys a quick tour of the knitting room. It's mostly done. Forgive the little bit of the mess that it is right now. But, um, okay, so here we go. I'm a fixture in the Hold knitting on. room. Part one. You guys know this side from where we are. Yep. So the opposite side would be where? That way? Yes. <laughs> so this, these are the lights we use and the tripod. And the by Dr. Pepper. Well, that's a staple Angel. as well. And then there's a big uh, computer and such over there. So I got moved my shelves. I got my fiber. And this is my bookshelf slash desk and the drill. Michael's been putting stuff up in here. And the computer that we use to drill. record. <laughs> uh, this is what we where we do all the post-production. And I've got books and stuff over here. Laura organized it for me, so I don't know where anything is. <laughs> organized. We've got our little to-do board up there and some stuff to keep us organized. And then... Back to Laura. Who and doesn't then, get back to Laura? Yeah, it's all about me. 
And then if you go that way, you can see all the fake feet. <laughs> yes. The Grumpasaurus, the Swift, the, one of uh, Leslie's wheel, the eyeballs, all her yarn and fiber storage. Yep. The Swift and Ball Wonder on the floor right now because we're not using them. And my ridiculous little uh, Remco spinning wheel toy that I bought. <laughs> and my regular spinning wheel. And hold on, special treat just for y'all. There's my kitty. That's Fred. He's asleep. He doesn't care. He's hiding. Yep. And then you have the, I like your Pitaloop storage. Have you gotten that I haven't yet? gotten around here. Nope. So back around. Scheme winder. Pitaloop storage. Yes. I got a little, it looks like a coat rack, but I've decided to use it for Pitaloop storage. And then another to-do list board. We yes. have lots of to-do lists. Mm-hmm. And the only thing left really to show y'all is the server room. So this is a room that's next to the attic. And here's the server room. So we're fancy. <laughs> Michael's got all this stuff set up as servers, networked, and all that. And we've got our special cooling system, also known as an indoor air conditioner. And he's even got it separated from the attic with these cool little plastic curtain things. And that's where we track the airport. Mm-hmm. So we get notifications on our phone if the power goes out or it gets too hot or anything like that. Y'all are so fancy. We are. And that's where all the Knit Girl stuff is stored. So it's very important. <laughs> it is very important. All those big, huge, massive files. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the um, knitting room. I hope y'all enjoyed. <laughs> Bye, y'all.